I think we should talk about uh, Tamara Leach. She's finally getting her say. Uh, she's been muzzled for a very long time. And I'm so glad that I have Alexa on the show today to talk about this because you were there on the ground in Ottawa for so much of Tamara Leach's story. Mm -hmm. For the people who don't know, Tamara Leach uh, was the convoy organizer of the Freedom Convoy last February, over a year ago now. Uh, she spent upwards of 50 days in jail for the role she played in organizing the convoy. A completely peaceful woman. Um, she worked with the police the entire time to try to alleviate the congestion in the downtown core. Uh, but when Justin Trudeau invoked the Emergencies Act, she instantly became akin to um, a terrorist. And she was arrested on completely uh, nonviolent charges, um, mischief and counseling to commit mischief, which is the crime of being annoying in a public place and the police don't know what to do with you. That's what she was held on. Um and her new book, brand new book, has just soared to number one um, without any real promotion at all. We just kind of mentioned that Tamara wrote a book and her book, um, her book is called, let's bring up the website if you wouldn't mind. It's called Hold the Line, Naturally. And it's it's Hold the Line, My Story from the Heart of the Freedom Convoy. And these are finally what happened inside the convoy from Tamara, because we've heard a lot of people talk about Tamara, but she's never really had her say. And and it's good also to hear it from her because she was part of the organization. She saw different things that we saw on the ground, us reporting um, as people protesting also because she had like so many things going on, like press conference, dealing with like authority and dealing with... Um, the uh, politician and trying to get everything done in a good way. And it's it's good to finally heard what she has to say because they muzzle her since uh, the, the convoy has finished, uh, stopping her to say her say and uh, trying to explain what she has done so far or how she felt. No, nobody give her this this opportunity and i'm ag actually glad to see that she had the opportunity opportunity to write this book that everybody can purchase and see the other side of the story of her side you know and i think that's one of the reasons why they were so quick to muzzle her is because if you actually talk to this charming little woman um, you'll realize that she's so warm. She's so compassionate. She's not violent. She's not a terrorist. She's actually somebody who has come out of the separatist movement and found new love for her country through her activism. But if you hear her talk, you will instantly know she is not all those things that the other side says she is. So they had to keep her quiet. For a lot of people, the first time they really heard her in a year was during her testimony at the Public Order Emergency mm -hmm. Commission. And it was heartfelt and it was gut-wrenching that she felt like she had the weight of the world on her shoulders. And, you know, to hear her story of how she walked out into the street knowing she'd have to turn herself in. She didn't know when she'd see her kids again or her grandkids again. Um, I, I mean, it was just, it, it's terrible. And I'm so happy that we at Rebel News have played a part in giving her her voice back. And uh, it, if people at home want to get their copy of the book, and I suggest you do, it's at Convoy Book, the Convoy Book, I'm sorry, dot com. And uh, we're also crowdfunding a book tour with Tamara. So she, we want to bring her to as many places uh, in this country as possible where uh, Canadians can actually hear her speak. Um, and, and they'll know, they'll know that they were lied to about her, about everything. And for the people who didn't know why she didn't speak before, it's because she had some restriction from the judge stopping her yeah. to talk. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, we've had her book completely lawyered <laughs> to make sure that we don't play a part in sending her back to jail because, boy, wouldn't they like that? I mean, they sent her back to jail for a picture mm -hmm. uh, in a room full of lawyers. Um, because her restriction said you can't take a picture or interact with um, other convoy organizers. So she was sent back to jail on a uh, breach of her conditions. But one of the 
uh, exceptions to her conditions was except in the company of your lawyer. And it was a room full of lawyers. It was an event hosted by the law firm representing her, the Justice Center for Constitutional Freedom. So these people are really eager to send her back to jail on a technicality. We made sure that we didn't we didn't do that. Um, let's hopefully let's hope it stays that way. But again, it's the convoy book dot com. And it's at number one. <laughs> it's at number one. So that's great. Yeah, I opened my uh, Amazon uh, yesterday and I was like, whoa, it's actually like showing up in my Amazon. And I didn't do research for it. It just comes up. Yeah. <laughs> well, it just shows like that is a symptom of everything about the convoy. That's why we were so huge during the convoy um, is because people want the other side of the story. They've heard what the CBC says about the truckers, the CBC who never went down to actually talk to the truckers, even though uh, Ottawa is a wriggling snake pit of journalists. They're like, <laughs> throw a rock in any direction. You're hitting a mainstream media journalist. They couldn't go talk to the truckers. All we had to do and all you had to do was turn your camera on just to, to tell the other side of the story. Um, and we were getting more views every single day than the CBC. Um, and the, this book is the same thing. That's why it soared to number one is because people want the truth. They've heard a lot of people talk about Tamara. Now Tamara will have her say. That's a clip from something we call Rebel News Daily. It's our daily live stream hosted by my friend David Menzies, but the show also includes a rotating cast of hosts and special guests, including me. It's a great way for us to talk about the news of the day as the news is happening in an unscripted fashion. And it's an awesome way for you to interact with us as well. We stream every weekday, 1 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Mountain, wherever you find Rebel News. See you there.